Hey guys, my name is Gloria and welcome back to my channel. I have finally gotten to the vintage review that I have been talking about for at least six months. I've I finally got here. Don't know why it took so long. I'm happy to be filming this and to talk about these very interesting stories. Just a little update. I finally, took me some time, but I finally got the gifts uh, sent away for the giveaway all the way to Philippines and North Africa, which is still blowing my mind. I can't believe anyone from so far away would uh, click on uh, Little Me's videos, but I really hope that the winners enjoy what they've gotten and I will obviously be doing more giveaways in the future. So today I want to talk about some vintage uh, stories that I read a few months ago, to be honest now, but that I really enjoyed. Uh, two short stories and one novel that was originally a play and that I first saw as a movie. So the first one I want to talk about is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman and I have heard of this story for so long. Uh, never came up in my English degree but in all of my creative writing classes or groups or whatever. I'm sure I have so many notebooks where I've written the yellow wallpaper in the margins and it came up yet again. Uh, recently someone mentioned it and rather than just nodding and pretending I've definitely read it, uh, I figured I would actually go and read it. And I just want to give a sh very short, tiny little extract of it to give you a taste of what the writing is like and it's very good. I very much enjoyed it. He said we came here solely on my account, that I was to have perfect rest and all the air I could get. Your exercise depends on your strength, my dear, said he, and your food somewhat on your appetite, but air you can absorb all the time. So we took the nursery at the top of the house. It is a big airy room, the whole floor nearly with windows that look all ways and air and sunshine galore. It was nursery first, and then playroom and gymnasium, I should judge. For the windows are barred for little children, and there are rings and things in the walls. The paint and paper look as if for a boy's school had used it. It is stripped off the paper, in great patches all around the head of my bed, and about as far as I can reach, and in a great place on the other side of the room, low down. I never saw a worse paper in my life. One of those sprawling flamboyant patterns committing every artistic sin. It is dull enough to confuse the eye in following, pronounced enough to constantly irritate and provoke study, and when you follow the lame uncertain curves for a little distance they suddenly commit suicide, plunge off at outrageous angles, destroy themselves in unheard of contradictions. So as you can imagine, uh, this short story is about a woman who is sickly in some way and her husband is a doctor and they go off to this house and take up in this large yellow wallpapered nursery apparently so that she can uh, get to the air and uh, feel better and it seems to be some sort of a, a mental health issue although throughout the story you kind of get the sense that she might be getting gaslit a little gaslit a little bit that her husband though he's a doctor doesn't seem to be helping her very much and just kind of wants to contain her much like the the bars on the windows of this nursery and she becomes obsessed with the wallpaper and the patterns in the wallpaper and the damage that was done previously and all of these things and it's a very interesting story one point I have to make is that when I started reading this, I thought that I was potentially having a stroke or just had lost all reading comprehension since my college days because I couldn't make heads nor tails of it. Turns out though that uh, I think I, although you can get it online and I'll, I'll link uh, the PDF down below, you can read it totally for free. I was being lazy and didn't want to look for it so I decided to uh, get it for Kindle and unfortunately I must have gotten a version that was badly 
Google translated from another language even though it's originally in English because I was so so confused so I'm just going to read you what I read and why I was confused and then I'll read you the two sentences <laughs> of this um, so I started reading and I read else why must it be permit so affordably and why have stood see you later untenanted John laughs at me of direction but one expects that in marriage I was because I read quite quickly so I had to reread things and I thought oh you're just reading too too quickly you have to concentrate you're too tired and then I would read it again and I'd be like no no you're just you're having a stroke you need to see a doctor for this so the translation of that part is else why should it be let so cheaply and why have stood so long untenanted John laughs at me of course but one expects that in marriage. Um, so it just feels like terrible, like, or even, um, you know when Joey and Friends tries to write a letter with the thesaurus and even his name, Joey, is translated to baby kangaroo. That's kind of what it feels like, it's just terrible. The actual story itself is really well written. I think it's a great study for a short story and I guess that's why it keeps coming up so much in all my creative writing classes and my grips because it's very self-contained, it really gets in very close to the main character, this woman who is constantly being told that she's sick and, and is worried about her health and is sort of being driven mad by this room that she's confined in and this yellow wallpaper that is supposed to be bright and happy and making her feel better but it's actually driving her around the bend and her husband who she's supposed to obey and look to for any kind of advice but especially medical advice because he is a doctor is not helping in any way and seems to be twisting the screws even worse and the writing I think is great it's a great uh, depiction of women and mental health and particularly at this time you know, everything being chalked up to hysteria and nothing being taken seriously and no real help given, just tucking someone away behind a barred window and uh, telling them to get better as if that will actually help. Um, so I really enjoyed it. I definitely know now why people uh, are always talking about it. So that was one of the first uh, older stories that I read. And now on to the novel. Next up we have one of the novels that I read and it is actually, I'm gonna say it, has become one of my favourite novels ever. I genuinely can't wait to reread this book and I read it on Kindle so I really want to find a nice physical copy of it as well. I mentioned it in my last video, it's called The Little Girl That Lives Down the Lane by Laird Koenig and I originally saw it as a movie that was on Netflix, I think it might still be there, and it was drawn in by Jodie Foster, who is an actress I've always loved, and it is the story of a girl that lives down the lane, and a secret that she is trying to keep, and how she tries to keep it from the people around her, and the adults around her in particular, and I absolutely loved it. I'm just going to give a very short snippet of it here. So at the kitchen counter the girl opened a paper cake box and with both hands carefully lifted a small cake thick with pale yellow frosting onto a plate. Although snowy sugar daubed her hands she did not lick her fingers. She rubbed off the frosting with a paper towel. Into the cake's gleaming rippled satin surface she slowly pushed 13 tiny yellow candles standing them upright in a ring. The other candles she returned to a drawer. She struck a wooden match, the first of three it would take, moving the flame as quickly as she was able to bring all thirteen candles alive and dancing with fire. When she shook the match to kill the flame, her hand, silhouetted by the blaze of candlelight, glowed red. She studied it for a long moment, just as she had 
looked at everything more closely on this special day. Slowly, she turned her hand. Her fingers, blood red at the edges, were almost transparent, except for the line of small, perfectly trimmed fingernails. She carried the dazzling cake, but instead of taking it directly into the parlour, she crossed to the dark corner by the front door, where under a coat rack, a long mirror glinted. Even before she reached the mirror, the candle glow blazed the shadowy corner into light. So, the story begins on Rin, that is the young girl's name, her 13th birthday, and it's a very special day for her, but it's also Halloween night. So, the story opens with her celebrating her birthday, and then, when there's a knock at the door, realising that it's actually Halloween night as well. And the person who's come to the door is an adult man. He is the son of the landlord of this house that her and her father are renting. And he comes to the door with no children. Already a little suspect. Uh, he says he's coming before his uh, girlfriend's children just to to make sure that the person who's there is ready for uh, the children to come along. But even as young as Ren is, uh, she gets a sense that this guy is a little bit too interested in her and a little bit too interested in a girl seemingly alone at home and uh, very creepy, weird, not good vibes. But she manages the situation as best as she can, being as polite as she has always been taught to be while keeping a firm line between them. And after this, days pass, time passes, the landlord actually comes, tries to get some stuff out of the house. Every time someone comes, her father is away in business. He's a writer, so you know, he's off with his publisher, off writing things, or he's sleeping, or he's off writing, and you can't disturb a writer when they're writing. We all know this. Um, but people keep asking questions, and people keep prying and coming back, and she has to come up with more and more answers. And eventually, a young guy comes along, um, Mario, who is a magician, and the two strike up a friendship, and he begins to help her cover up this dark secret that she has. I wish that I had been given this book when I was younger. Now, I also spent a lot of time by myself as a kid. I was nowhere near as intelligent as Rin, or as well set up as she is. Uh, I certainly wasn't listening to Hebrew on a gramophone to uh, learn a new language, but I absolutely love Rin's character. I I would have loved to read this as a kid and to to see what such a young person is actually capable of and how they can look after themselves. But I am very glad that I got to read it now. It is fantastic. I love her character. I love her strength and her independence and I, I love her, her friendship with Mario as well. I love that she is so fiercely independent. She is not going to let anything get in her way and the ending of the book as well is just... Mm. The, the entire book, you can definitely see why it was first to play. There is just this tension the whole way through in every scene there is this this tension that you just need to have dissipated and it's it's written so well everything is just eked out just a little bit and a little bit more and it was just such a great read it's very understated a lot of the eerie dark things are sort of in the shadows nothing is too out there or gruesome or anything but it's it's just really entertaining to read and you're just with Rin the entire story so I absolutely loved it would definitely recommend. The next novel I have is Bird's Nest by Shirley Jackson. I have no idea why this came up I think I just wanted to read another Shirley Jackson um, and I found it on Kindle and Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stop reading intros for these sort of classics because it did sort of 
ruin it for me. I knew nothing about the bird's nest. The intro did kind of ruin it for me and I don't even want to ruin it for other people but it is about a young woman who lives with her aunt and she starts to have very strange things happening to her so she goes to a male psychologist who tries to help her through these odd things, these memory lapses she's having, these strange things that are happening to her and strange letters that are being written to her and sent to her at work and she has no idea who's writing them or where they're coming from. Um, I don't want to say much more than that but of course it's it's a Shirley Jackson novel, it's got a fantastic character at the centre, fantastically weird little quirks and mannerisms going on. It can be quite funny at times as well but it's it's also heartbreaking as well and uh, I just I love what she really does with the domestic space and women in their homes and you know all the the things that are seemingly feminine and I think could just be thrown off as you know a house chore or a bit of fashion but she really uses it to expand on the characters really well and to show exactly the sort of personalities that they are and the, the tensions and the inner turmoil that they are going through. Uh, so again another great Shirley Jackson uh, novel and uh, quite, quite an interesting psychological one as well. The last story I want to talk about is called The Swimmer by John Cheever and this was actually published in The New Yorker. I will link the I will put the link down below in the description. It's a short read but it is very interesting. Uh, this isn't horror in any way but it is a, a literary fiction story and I think it's a fantastic short story. It is also a movie but I have not seen the movie but it's the movie seems like it could be a little bit weird and creepy so I might watch it. It's a short story but it's one of those ones that I think is absolutely fascinating because the writer manages to pack in decades, literally a lifespan into this short story that on the surface is just about a man uh, getting home by using his neighbor's swimming pools. So he, he is at a garden party where there's a pool, he gets out of the pool, has a drink and decides, you know what, I'm gonna go home but I'm only gonna go home by hopping over fences and going from house to house, visiting my friends, grabbing a drink or saying hello while I'm there and swimming the length of their pool uh, until I get home. A simple story but of course there are layers to it, there's turmoil in this man's life, he's, you know, no one is ever running or swimming away for the crack, he is swimming away from something and it's very well written, very interesting and gets just a shade darker with every, uh, every stroke, every lap of the pool that he does. I'm gonna put another one up on screen here that is very short. I've Blind Boy from the Rubber Bandits shared it on his Instagram and this is another really good one that again very short but it has an entire a person's entire lifespan in it and it tells you so much with so little words and that's one of the sort of goals of a short story is the economy of words but these kind of stories I think are the ones that do it really really well rather than just one scene or one snapshot or even using one scene or one snapshot to tell an entire life story. Uh, I just love those stories so you should definitely check out the one I have on screen and also the two down below and definitely check out the two novels I mentioned as well because I definitely want to get two really good uh, physical copies of those, especially the Laird Koenig one. Those are my vintage stories that I've read recently. If you know of any like those that I 
may like, please let me know. I'm currently reading uh, Hangisman by Shirley Jackson, which I do have a physical copy of, and I am thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. If you like what I'm doing here, you can like and subscribe down below. I will be back very soon with some more writing vlogs, reading vlogs, and some interesting videos, hopefully. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.